Well, 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 well. Happy Thursday to everyone. I've got a diverse, stunning and diverse array of topics for you today on this channel. Uh, all I ask is that if you enjoy it, leave a like. And if you haven't yet, subscribe down below. Tay Tay Taylor Lorenz. Many of my viewers know that uh, I've spoken at length about the 87-year-old journalist who has bounced around from the New York Times to the Washington Post and all these other places, a octogenarian obsessed with uh, teenagers on TikToks, uh, on TikTok and canceling anyone who criticizes her. Uh, for someone as old as Taylor Lorenz is, it's odd that she doesn't know some of the most basic things about reporting, but she isn't actually a reporter. She is an incredibly rich, incredibly well-connected uh, elitist who uh, uses that power to um, ban citizens off the internet. And now we have proof of it. That right after a quick word from this video sponsor, Galaxy Lamps. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Galaxy Lamps. Are you looking for a cool way to add some magic to your home? Well, look no further than the Galaxy Projector 2.0. This lamp projects vibrant RGB colors and laser stars, transforming any room into a magical planetarium. You can control the projector via the app, which gives you full control over the brightness, colors, rotation, speed, on-off scheduling, and much more. So bring some magic into your home with the Galaxy Projector 2.0. The new Galaxy Projector 2.0 is the latest and greatest way to bring the beauty of the galaxy into your home. The stunning projection system creates a realistic planetarium right in your own home with vibrant colors and beautiful stars that you can control via the app. You can enjoy the night sky anytime, anywhere. Another cool feature is it can be set up to work with both Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. It can be used on its own without integrating to the app with its six different color pattern settings, three stand system that allows you to put it up against the wall and ceilings. And right now, if you use promo code the quartering, you'll save 15% off. Make sure you use the link in the description below or the pin comment and promo code the quartering to pick up your Galaxy lamp today. It's a cool gift. Check it out. Got a big discount for you in the link in the description. Twitter files. Twitter provided privileged access to banning queen Taylor Lorenz. Hashtag Twitter files. Twitter engineer walking me through their reporting system. Wow, she's a heavy user. Shortly after. So if you don't know who Taylor Lorenz is, she is a, a worthless uh, shill journo that uh, keeps her apartment at proudly at 90 degrees Fahrenheit because she's clearly a reptilian. Um, and uh, <clears throat> she is everything wrong with modern journalism. She is a prototypical uh, woman that just hates other women, in particular ones that are better looking and more successful than her. Shortly after Elon Musk bought Twitter, Taylor Lorenz got apoplectic, writing that Twitter was opening the gates of hell by letting banned accounts back. Take a wild guess what Taylor did the month prior. The month prior, Taylor Lorenz got this tiny account banned. Surprise, the account detailed Lorenz as a Manhattan rich girl who attended Swiss boarding school and whose uncle owns Internet Archive, thus erasing her past. This is 100% true. It's 100% true. Uh, you know, essentially, she got Fear the Floof banned from Twitter because they revealed her real age, 106, and the fact that she was born into an extremely rich family, has never had to worry about money, and, uh, and uh, is not one of us. And people wondered for a long time, how come you couldn't find her... Um, you know, how come you couldn't find her history online? Well, it's because her family was deleting it. But did Fear the, F Fear the Floof actually violate Twitter rules? By the way, this account is still suspended. Nope. No ban evasion, abuse, harassment towards Taylor Lorenz, platform manipulation, or sharing of personal information. The account was generally healthy, quote, and mostly, co mostly con conversational or commentary in nature, according to Twitter's own report. Nonetheless, Twitter suspended the account because it violates the Twitter media policy. The account then deactivated. What the F they suspended for the floof because of its threat. 
a month prior to that, Lorenz went after Dr. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to, sorry, Dr. Bhattacharya for tweeting an email by her friend and internet blogger, Walker Bregman. Bhattacharya tweeted a harassing email Bregman sent him, and it had Bregman's contact info on it. Here's the description. Hello, Taylor Lorenz, a reporter at one of my partners, just flagged this tweet to me. And it shows an email and phone number of Walter Bregman, a journalist who is writing a story about the doctor. Please note that Walter Bregman is not one of my partners. However, he is verified ooh, and has turned his tweets private, suggesting this tweet is causing unwanted attention. Don't care. Not one bit. Bregman then played it all up on Twitter, of course, to call attention to himself, retweeting Bhattacharya's tweet before people made fun of him for doxing himself. Manhattan rich kids playing at journalists are easily bruised, it seems. Bregman's game is, by the way, shout out to Paul D. Thacker. I will give them a follow for this thread. Good job. Um, Bregman's game is to consistently accuse people of being uh, funded. FY, you know, Soros stuff, blah, 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 blah. I think this is a Koch brothers or something like that. Several of Lorenz's past reporting targets tell me she seemed to work in concert with her sources. After Lorenz doxed limbs of TikTok in the post, Alejandra Caraballo sent Twitter a, quote, private letter to remove libs of TikTok. Lorenz quoted Caraballo in the post that very next month. This is Washington Post. This is a, a hilarious liar, grifter, and a trans activist, uh, Alejandra Caraballo. Good morning. I'm reaching on her behalf of a coalition of multiple LGBTQI plus and anti-hate organizations, doesn't name any of them, um, that have come together around our grave concerns about the imminent public safety risk posed by the libs of TikTok account. Wow. I mean, could you ham it up even more? We would like to schedule a meeting within the coming days regarding this matter. I would greatly and appreciate if you responded by ooh, demanding a response too. That's always good. The letter was sent by Carbio had several groups, including the Center for Countering Digital Hate, a favorite source of Lorenz's essays in the banning. And by the way, just because she CC'd them doesn't mean they actually were involved. I asked Carbio what came of the meeting with Twitter and to see the letter they sent, but I got no response. Shocking. I also don't know if Libs of TikTok was successful in getting Carbio suspended for harassment. It's hard to understand Lorenz's concerns about doxing when she has done this many times herself. Here's one allegation in a defamation lawsuit from Jacob, um, Eridana Jacob, Eridania Jacob, I probably mispronouncing that, sorry, against Lorenz that is still working its way through the courts. Lorenz, who has more than special reporting access to get to account, or get accounts bans. When Tucker Carlson did a piece ridiculing her, Twitter put out an alert, quote, we need to be careful with her. I couldn't get evidence that Twitter provided the support to other reporters. I never got, I asked for it and I never got it. Can we please monitor the conversation around Taylor Lorenz? She was specifically targeted by Tucker Carlson. By the way, she is a reporter. Like uh, uh, a, a, a journalist and a public figure, okay? Taylor also provided special support to a source in stories she wrote for the Atlantic, New York Times, and recently the Washington Post. When Jackson Weimer's account was suspended, Lorenz put this in front of Twitter. Hi there, would you mind taking a look at uh, Weimer's account? More context in the email below, including screenshots. Please give me special treatment. Taylor Lorenz has an incredibly unorthodox reporting tactics. Here's an affidavit signed by someone she quoted in the article about uh, Little Miss Jacob. This is uh, Eridania again. FYI, this person was a minor. Although I felt pressured to give Miss Lorenz negative information about this person, I had not experienced those negative interactions at any point in the seven months. I had been working closely with Miss Jacob. I did not witness any miss. So she's a scumbag, okay, uh, allegedly. Here's the affidavit signed by Lorenz, a Lorenz source for the New York Times story about uh, Arya Tufanian. 
I was the source of information for Ms. Lorenz, a New York Times reporter. Um, in the article, Ms. Lorenz asserts that Mr. The person promised students Instagram fame and silenced them with threats. Ms. Lorenz never asked me for any documentary proof showing that he defrauded or scammed anyone or that he was operating any kind of pyramid scheme. I was also the founder of GroupMe, group chat, whose members were directed to source information to Ms. Lorenz for her article. I did not provide any material, so she went up with no evidence. He then told me that he sued Lorenz over the article, and she began sending messages to gin up a Department of Justice investigation against him. This email Lorenz is sending around for assistant U.S. attorney in New York. I think he blocked me from being able to see his story. You should reach out to this government official. Do not say you got the information from me. Oh, God, Taylor Lorenz, everyone needs to sue this broad. Do not say you got the information from me, but I heard he's a law enforcement officer that has been reaching out to other kids. I mean, that's, but feel free to pass that email around. Like, that's literally a suable offense. He later received a subpoena from the Southern District that reads like a rip and read of Lorenz's article. The investigation dragged down for three years. He recently received this email to pick up his laptop that was confiscated. Quote, I was never charged. So she used the Department of Justice to harass her detractors. Neither Lorenz nor Cameron Barr with the Post responded to questions. Read more, of course, at the disinformationchronicle.substack.com. Twitter files, Twitter files provided privilege access to banning Queen Taylor Lorenz. Um, I mean, this is, this is absolute proof that this woman is a snake. Uh, and it's just, everyone needs to share this around. I, I'm sure that uh, Taylor Lorenz hasn't tweeted uh, at all. Let's see. Oh, I'm blocked. Follow me on LinkedIn. What? <laughs> Is that where all the leftoids went now? To LinkedIn? I remember when they were all like, oh, this thing's the new bee's knees. And then no one went over there. Okay, let's see. She has not tweeted since. Oh, wait. Let's see. She's completely ignored the Twitter files. Let's see. Nope, nothing. She retweeted something about the FTC. And that's it. And she's not responded at all. I am utterly shocked. What I also like is her mocking, you know, instead of responding to, uh, instead of responding to the Twitter file, she's like, oh, ha ha, blue check marks can upload videos now. That, of course, she's a written word person who hates video. She writes, that's just what blue checks need. Yeah, actually it is. And we also need ad support. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. We'll talk to you again real soon.